so strange. Hey. I mean, I know. We're getting, we're getting the music back. The music's coming back to KSCO. I got bands lined up from here to Timbuktu. They all want to come down here and play. All right, cool. Good to see you, buddy. Oh, no. <laughs> Hold it! <laughs> Hold it! Hang on a minute. Just you? <laughs> Did you find out? Did you find our entry song? What do you mean it's not in there? Uh, Billy Graff said it was in there. Oh my <laughs> lord! No, you don't have to do that. We we'll just start talking. Hey, why yeah. not? I want to hear it. All right, go ahead. Go okay, ahead. Let's yeah, do it. Here let's we go. Do it. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Is my isn't my entry in it? From man, no. I was wondering if we were going back to the Smashing Pumpkins. We were. I found that. I found it. Mm. Oh, tonight's show. Here we are. Bigger boat. <laughs> well, let me say, okay, so we were, we were asked to come back. I have no idea what I it was. I thought we got kicked out. We got canned. <laughs> no, no. no, we didn't get canned. No, we didn't get canned. We oh, didn't, we didn't? We didn't get canned. We decided we wanted to podcast our show, which, by the way, we're still doing. And so this is like a PG rated show, right? And, no, we cannot do that because the stuff we did at the stuff we did at the boardroom, we cannot do here. Okay, it was a heavy drinking, uh, heavy swearing. Well, maybe not that heavy. No. Medium. <laughs> Let's not sell ourselves out that quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. if, but is KSO, is KSO ready for us to come back? I don't know. If the audience is like, I don't know if the audience is ready for this. Do they want this back? You can call in and let us know, or don't call in, because I have no idea how the phone line well, works Well, the, before they call, just I, know I, that we know we're terrible. Yeah, and I've got no, I know, I have no idea how to, I do not remember how to use a board to pick to pick up phone calls, so don't call. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you're drunk and stoned, please don't call. <laughs> Neil, how many shows have we done This is 450 at, at oh, KSCO. Here? Probably around 300. Four? Uh, I don't know. Probably 350, maybe 400. Oh, wow. Now we're up to 545 something shows. It's pretty wild being back. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's, yeah. It is weird. Yeah, it's good to be back. Yeah. It's, 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 we had, you know why? Because we had, we, we got up to shenanigans in this room. We broke we, rules, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> They're already calling. Get out of Get them out of there. They definitely broke People a bunch of calling. rules. They beat it, Coop. No, no, but my wife's like, you're fired. <laughs> But we got some shenanigans here. I mean, for example, we're the only people who had a burlesque show on a radio program. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Especially when you went home talking to your wife, when your wife said, so honey, wh who was on the show tonight? I was tonight? like, Neil, Neil did it again, honey. No, you said, you said, who was on the show tonight, honey? Oh, just some a band. band. Just a band. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 12. I didn't really know. 12. And she's like, of course you knew. And I, was, what am I going to say? Yeah, we had these girls dancing in their underwear on the radio show. That went over that yeah. was great. Yeah, yeah for that's girls. Yeah. Some... Well, Rosie found a bra in the parking lot next day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you were spitting that boa, so the boa things on your teeth. <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, we have a guest tonight. Uh, should we should talk. Hang, hang on a second. We've got to bring this up okay. before we talk to the guest because the guest is going to get involved. We have some several. We have several sponsors who sponsor the show. New sponsors and old ones are still involved. Like, we have great sponsors. Chill Out Cafe, where they roll the fatties. They do. They roll the fatties Ooh. into Chill Out Cafe. Yeah. But we also have a now. I just signed a contract with a national sponsor. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, are we, <laughs> Neil. Neil, is that called is that called selling out? No, I don't think so. It's it's it, I, it's, it's it's cool. It's, it's, don't you think so? I mean, na so we have a national. We went, from a, we went for, from a show that we thought we'd get. We, I mean, Rosie five said days. we might make it six shows and then we're mm -hmm. out of here. But we lasted 454 shows so far, mm -hmm. and now we have a national sponsor, like like Chevy or Toyota. Like Chevy or Toyota, <laughs> right? Or Amazon, right? Big one, right? Big one or some big airline, you know, whatever. And here we go. Ready? We have. We, here we go. That drum roll, please. Brand new big sponsor. This is breaking news. I know nothing of this. Manscaped. <laughs> Can you please explain? 
They they have all these. <laughs> it's all, okay, so it's a company. By yeah. the way, by the way, there was a Shark Tank that what's his face? Uh, he, Mark Mark Cuban. Mark Cuban put how much did he put in there? Seven hundred thousand dollars. A lot of money. So Listen. Manscaped is to take care of and you know your. The areas that need to be manscaped on a man's body. So it's well, basically a uh, body too, right? Lawnmower parts for male bodies. <laughs> That's it. That's what we're talking about. You're right, and we're gonna we're gonna, we're we gonna, gonna mow to... the lawn. So we gotta mow the lawn. I mean, I like the one had a flashlight on it, dude. Well, that's. <laughs> So you could see what you were doing down below. I or is that like your wife's like, hey, take care of it, and you're like, I got it. <laughs> NASCAR pit stop. You just break out the jack, clean that thing up. You're back on the track. <laughs> so that's our new sponsor. Yeah, Manscaped. Wait, that's awesome. Do we get the, the, do we get tools? Oh, we get here's what we get. We get tools. We get the whole we get the whole, the whole kit. swag. We got swag and the big kit. Plus, hold it. Hold it. We, is this a contest? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> this is like, we've done like weight loss contest. No, please, this is not a contest. This is not. Okay, this, thank this God. This is not a swag contest. <laughs> not a contest. <laughs> Who's waiting on the run? Who's talking okay. the line? Dick, Dick. On talk Manscaped now. night. Come on, Dick. It's perfect. Dick's one combo. <laughs> Gift with call. Our first call. First caller gets a manscaped uh, kit. Our first call is. Our winner is. Uh, Dick. Uh, uh, <laughs> you can't write that stuff, Neil. We maybe one and done. Welcome back to KSCL. It was a great night. We'll uh, be back in three years. <laughs> Dick. 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 I love you. Oh my goodness. Okay. Wow. Oh my Dick God. hung up for sure. Dick just <laughs> hanging up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fine. So we get T-shirts and right. boxes. Box. So oh, I made boxes. I had to guess what boxer size you were. So since you haven't been going to yoga 30, for at least four, three or six, maybe for about three months. Yeah. Meanwhile, throwing me under the bus saying you have been going to yoga. Yeah, no, I, I got you double XL. Thank you. With a double XL T-shirt. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right, so, by, the way, have, by the way, we have a guest tonight. <laughs> we do, and uh, on Manscaped Night, which, by the way, is a Shark Tank yeah. company. Yeah, it's not. How appropriate for tonight's show. Right, exactly. Okay, without further ado, Neil. <laughs> Dr. Dave Eber. Now, Dr. Dave Eber uh, was on a show, on a podcast recently. We had so much fun. We found him totally fascinating and entertaining, by the way. Well that, traveled. That, when, I, when, I, when they decided to invite us back to KSCO, I go, Okay, I gotta get a guest. Boom! First guest I thought about was Dave. Yeah. Because uh, he was a true gentleman. Uh, his work, like he's doing right now, he's a, there's a book in front of him right now. Which, it's not a book. This book, by a, the way, I think it. Do you know the weight, Dave? Uh, it's about six pounds. It's a six pound book. It's, so anyone who's yeah. listening, this book weighs six pounds. So I'm gonna try and get his shtick right. Dave Eber, Dr. Dave Eber, is a marine biologist. Uh, specialized in sharks. Specializing. Special. I'm do what I couldn't listen Specializing yeah. in sharks, who himself has found 50? 50. 50 yeah. species, unknown species, himself. Yeah. yeah. Named them. Named you got them. to name them. Yeah. I got more, I just haven't named them yet. Okay. So. This book, it dropped in Europe today. Yes. How many pages? It's uh, 607 pages. He's, you know what's funny about doc guys? They, you know, like, 607 pages. <laughs> <laughs> And there's new sharks in here that were not in your last book. How Correct. many? Uh, there's at least 50, I think 51, 52 species that have never been uh, in a book before. It's the first book that will have these species in it. Why do I think you're like an astronaut discovering things on the moon? It's so weird to think that there's... Here's so, a book. Right. I mean, the last shark... Well, it is, yeah, but exactly. how, was, how long ago was your last Sharks of the World book? Uh, it's eight years ago. It, so in eight years, yeah. this book has fifty new species of shark. Yeah. And since this come out, I've already had three new species come out. Just two yesterday, and then uh, one about two weeks ago. How, how do you how do you find the new species? How does people call you up and say, "I think it's something over here where you don't recognize," and you trot off to you know well, Tanzania somewhere and and check <laughs> right and, and check out something that maybe hasn't been seen before? How 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 is it you come across so many? A lot, well, you have, it's kind of like knowing where to go look in different different parts of the world. There's usually more a lot of more remote areas like Zanzibar, or Sri Lanka, and some of these places there. 
I'll go to these places. A lot of times I go there to look for something else. And then I always try to go to fish markets, talk to fishermen, local people. And these are places that are completely off the grid. Most of you don't find these like the tours of Bert right. Hero. Right. Um, and I always work with some of the lo some local people that I know. They're with NGOs or universities there locally that, that, that can bring in expertise they don't have. And so we'll go off to some just out of the way place and there's just nobody really out there looking for them. It's a lot of times it's just going and looking to see. And again, a lot of times I'll go there looking for something else and I'll, I'll see them bring in some sharks and I'm like, oh, hey, I don't recognize that one there. Neil. Yeah. You think he has life insurance? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, what do you do for a living? Well, I swim with sharks, you know, and uh, I've mean, discovered I mean, 50. I mean, I mean, what, I mean, what thought comes to mind? Have you ever been through a fish market in like Sri Lanka and going, and going what the hell is that thing? Well, it's funny you mentioned Sri Lanka. One of, the, one of the more recent, really great discoveries I had is a, a friend of mine sent me this picture of this shark from this little fishing site in Sri Lanka about six months before I went there. And I'm looking at this thing going, man, I think this is like a new species of shark. So when I went there, I talked to my friends. I said, listen, we've got to go to this fish market. Now, they didn't, now they didn't even know. These are the local Sri Lankans. They didn't even know there was a fish market, a fish landing site, any fishing going on at this place. So we went to this place. and I had Middle of nowhere. Yeah, it's just out in the north. In fact, if you didn't show up at the right time of day, you'd have no idea there was even a fishery going on. Because they're all fishing. Yeah, they're out fishing, but they come in, and the activity is really quick. And so if you're not aware of it, they're there, they're gone within a couple of hours, everything's closed up, and it's just like this abandoned Nothing. beach. Right. Is there yeah. a Marriott there? Or something? It doesn't matter. Exactly. <laughs> Where do you sleep and when you go it, to this joint? It depends. I'm just trying, I'm, trying, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to get a picture of what it's like. It's, 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 a, it's, a, fair, it's a fair question. Uh, nowadays, I try to find some place to stay. It used to be you just sort of sleep wherever you could find, where the wildlife might not eat you or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, but anyway, I showed these guys, these fishermen, this picture of the shark. And they kind of like looked at it and said, oh, okay, I'll come back tomorrow. And I was like, okay, I'll come back tomorrow. So I come back the next day, and they got one. And it's like when you're only there for a couple days... You don't think like they're going to get one because it's fishing, you know. You never mm -hmm. know. But they brought one in. Oh, that was the one you called it in, wasn't it? Yeah, and I was like, I was just, I was, just, I was super stoked, was running around like full, like you know, if you wanted to catch some like science and action, I was like going around doing fist pumps and everything. Well, then the whole point huh. was, the whole point was, after they, I, I, when I kind of calmed down, I looked at this, I looked at this and I go, do you guys catch these very often? He says, oh yeah, we caught three yesterday. But we just throw them back; they're not worth anything. So, hmm. so yeah, so it's kind of like that. And again, once they leave, you'd have no idea. If it wasn't for seeing this picture and having an idea to go look at this place, at this, they had no idea there's a fishery. There was a fishery going on, let alone there's new species of sharks being caught. Right. The, the, the one story. When we talked the day before, the one story that came to mind, TC, was the mm -hmm. rowboat. Oh, oh yeah. the robo. The robo. Yeah. Was the robo going to die, robo? Right? I was getting no. now. I was here. So I can, can. Can you tell us? Can you tell the robo? Yeah. And ladies and gentlemen, of, uh, if anybody's listening, hang on. It tells us here how many people are listening to this new KSEO production. There are three people listening to this show. Right? Woo! Awesome. <laughs> Perfect. We got that. We have that yeah, number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a big hit, doctor. <laughs> <You're right>. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Awesome. So the rowboat <laughs> okay, so, took place where? Okay, so this is in, in, in the country of Namibia. Where's Namibia? TC, you know what Namibia is? Uh, I think it's in Africa, right? It's, it's West Africa. West okay. Africa. Yeah, and this is kind below of, Senegal? Yes, below yeah. Angola. It's between okay. Angola and South Africa on the west on the west coast of Very Africa. Very sharky? Just get a United flight well, out of San, just get a United flight out of San Jose for that one? Yeah, exactly. Direct, <laughs> direct yeah. <laughs> yeah. Direct. No, you're, you're right. And and so, yeah, it's a cold, the water is more like around here, very cold, actually more like Northern California, very cold water. And it's some guy, and nobody ever studied sharks in that part of the world before, so that's the kind of stuff I looked for. And as, when I was a bit younger, and this, you talk about wildlife, we, where you sleep, well, we had, I had a pickup truck, and you would sleep in the cab in the back of the pickup truck, because you have, like, lions come around at night looking for food. <laughs> and so, and so, hmm. so you want to be, you know, because yeah. they, they hunt the seals on the beach. So and are they to, like Yosemite bears? Will they break the window and get you out? They could, but thank goodness they didn't. I yeah, be here. I'd, I I'd be a little concerned. Yeah. I went, yeah. Well, we get lions and we get, we get like hyenas. So and if, stuff we, so. if we have you as a guest in the future yeah. and you don't show up, yeah. that's the reason why. Right, right. Exactly. <laughs> they got eaten yesterday. Right. Well, we had, well, they had, well, so we, there was this little town called Luteritz. It's like in, well, I can't use the terms on right. air, but a podcast, but I, I did. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so, we, so the guy said, there's a lot of these sharks, these seven gill sharks that I was looking for. So, I, talk, I talked to some guys in town. This is like, they've said before, this is like an absolute wild west town. It's totally crazy there. 
It's the middle, and so it's the middle of nowhere. So this guy loaned us this little ten foot fiberglass rowboat that we, uh, my friend San, and I, San Vato. Yeah, we basically nicknamed it Bob's Floating Coffin because <laughs> Bob was the guy that owned it, <laughs> and, and it was a rowboat. And so we rowed out into this lagoon, and we started, you know, putting down some lines and stuff. And they were right; we got all of these seven gill sharks. We just came in really close around the, around the boat. We're just catching them. We're, and then I row back about a kilometer to a mile back to shore, offload the sharks. We do our workups and go back out. Well, one day we're out there. I'm getting ready to, to gaff this shark and pull in the boat that we've caught. And rising about, about to gaff it, the whole water just turns white. And I'm sitting there like looking, like, what the hell's going on? And the shark, basically this white shark came up on its back. Great white. Great white shark. It bit the seven gill shark and spit it out right in front of us. <laughs> and it's swimming right alongside this 10-foot Bob's floating coffin. And the shark was at least half as long again as the boat. So <laughs> probably looking at 15 feet. So you talk about you want a new bo want bigger mm -hmm. boat. You need a bigger boat. Yeah. And so we managed, the, the, even though the, sh the shark bit this thing, he swams by, spits it out. We still managed to pull it in because it was still on the line. And at the moment, your, your adrenaline kind of kicks in, and we're going, oh, man, that's, like, so cool. And, like, I'm taking some pictures with my camera. And I guess this is before, this is like, you know, you have, like, slide film. It's right. not, like, digital camera. Thing. So we're taking some pictures, and we're, like, looking at each other. And all of a sudden, that feeling sets in, like, we're going to die. And so my friend quickly, like, baits up another hook, throws it in there, because there's all these other seven gills around there, and he hooks one. And so he lets his seven gill run out, and he's playing it to get it to distract the shark. Meanwhile, I'm rowing like heck. <laughs> For the shore, hoping to God we make it to shore because there's nobody around. If, if, How fast do you uh, row? Is it like water, no, I, pull the water skier fast? I, I, I <laughs> probably would have. I probably would have qualified for the Olympics. <laughs> I mean, really? When you're really, when you're really motivated to row, yeah. believe me, you can you can row. Yeah, I'm sure. And um, well, as I said, well, I'm here, so I made it. Wow. And um, yeah, we just had a one of those get drunk nights, like we're glad to be alive. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy because you go places where you can either die in the water or you can die on the beach. Oh, yeah. yeah but that's, Death. That's, people ask me, like, what about you? worry about the sharks or some of the wildlife? Like, I, well, I, I go to these places and they're like, I, I, I'm all ready to go. We're going to go look for sharks. And say, oh, yeah, that's great. Now, stay here, but you might want to stay out of this area here. This is, this is, this is, this is the landmine field. That's, this is landmine season. I'm like, landmine season? <laughs> There's a season for landmines? Yeah, well, apparently it gets so hot, like 120 degrees, the landmines just blow up, which is actually... Which is which is better than stepping on. Right. Mm. So. Should I take a first call? TC? He doesn't have life insurance. <laughs> <laughs> no <way. laughs> I know that. <laughs> I, how this thing? I, I don't have no idea how this works here. I'm, hang on, we got a phone. We got a phone call. But uh, we, you live in this area. I'm not gonna say where yeah. you live because yeah. I know you live in this area. But great white sharks is something that you really don't do much research I, on. Yeah, I've, I've done white, when I started out like. Because it was so new when I started in the '80s, it was kind of you know everything was neat. But now I don't really work on white sharks because almost everybody else does. Well, has there anything new yeah, to be discovered with white sharks? Uh, I'm sure somebody that does white sharks would probably tell you yes. Right. Um, I mean, locally here, what's kind of cool is over the last five, six years, all these little young white sharks. That's pretty cool. That that's that's pretty significant because they didn't used to be here. Mm -hmm. That they used to, you know, you normally see the large white sharks, which you just sort of, sort of take as. But don't run. don't great white sharks grow? Yes, they do. And the question is like, where do the where do the little ones come from? Yeah, and where do the, don't little ones grow big? Yes, they grow they grow very big. Actually. Yeah, and yeah. actually now it's been so long we're seeing the cohorts, the larger sharks, the intermediate size that we didn't used to see are there. And I say intermediate, we're talking like ten to fourteen feet. And they're teenagers. They're they can yeah. they make bad decisions. They're, teenagers. They're rambunctious. You know? Yeah. Like rambunctious part. sharks. What do you mean? Uh, Life of a great way. They. Any, I'd say at least 30, 30 to 50 years or so is the best estimates. This is, this is a call. Let's take our first phone call, TC. Oh, I'm going to try not to screw it up. This has been a long time since we've Here we go, here we go. This is Paul from Aptos. Paul, can you hear me? What's up, buddy? Yeah, we hear you. True. Yeah, yeah. That's very true. That's right. Yep, that's very true. Thanks, buddy, for calling. Hey, good point, though. Good yeah. point. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. It, what amazes me about that is uh, we're so um, resource uh, 
needy of resources, mm -hmm. why we're not, you know, looking in the oceans more. Well, you know, I think just to kind of, so even though it's, if I'm, what I do is, is, I say it's pretty cool, people think so, but the, the real, a lot of the stuff I, I do is like I've been going to certain markets, like in Taiwan, a few places, I've been going there like for 30 plus years, and you hear people talk about like, well, what, what's the importance of this? Well, for example, there, I, I have documented stuff from 30 years ago, you don't see these species caught anymore. But you're seeing different species, and what's happening is they're fishing deeper. So they, where they were fishing at, say, 300 feet, maybe 30 years ago, now they're fishing down to 3,000 feet because they can't catch stuff. And so, because they're not catching anything shallower. So mm -hmm. the type of work research I'm doing is like, it's great discovering species. That's like what's the cool part. But it has some real world applications because you have people want to know, like, why aren't we catching these sharks anymore? Well, I can document that here's what we were catching years ago, and here's what we're catching now. Wow. It's big, uh, it, it's, it's, the it's, gear? A lot, a lot of it has to do with the, they're just not catching enough inshore. So they, in, in this particular area, they, they move into deeper water. Because, you, you know, you, you fish everything out. It's like Monterey is a good example. Like, although this, it's Monterey is very different. The fisheries here, I think, I personally think are very well managed. But you, if you're, if you imagine fishing out all the local rockfish, you start moving deeper into the canyon. They catch things that, mm -hmm. that just because it's the only, the, there's the only place to get some of these things. So that's when you start seeing fish with like light bulbs and stuff. Right? Yeah, like some, yeah, so yeah. Light, like the some weird stuff. stuff that. Yeah, the light. No, but no. the light bulb one. Yeah, that's angler. It's not yeah, angler. Yeah, angler, angler. Yeah. Angler so you, you were fascinated by sharks because of the movie. Right, that's where your kind of career kicked off. No, actually, I got I got excited when I was about five, and my parents gave me a book on sharks. Oh, book on sharks. Okay. And then, and then when the move, but what really happened when the movie Jaws came out in '75 was in high school at the time. It was what was really what it really did is it created the whole field of shark science. There really was no field for it, even though like you know I was five years old, I was like I want to go study sharks. There was really no field for it. It was more people would do a little bit of shark work here and there, but it was more. It wasn't really, there was no feel for it. Right. After the movie came out, people, there was a lot of sensationalism to it, but a lot of people got interested and started asking questions like, how old do sharks get? How many species are there? Hmm. Where do they move to? And, and I was very fortunate when I started into college in the early 80s, there was that whole, there was this whole wave of, of basically us young researchers that caught that wave of, the, of really when shark science started. Yeah. What was that? That was our engineer who's... Oh, we're, what, what do we do? We're are you playing poker in there right now? What are you doing? He's playing solitaire. We're going to do but, Manscaped. I, I, want, I want to segue to what you have going on in your, your new um, podcast project. Yeah, yeah. What's, what's well, up with that? Well, actually, I, yeah, I've start, I'm starting a new podcast. Well, I should say, I am, uh, I'm, uh, the American Lazo Brank Society, which is, which is the largest... Organization of Professional Shark Researchers and Conservationists. Um, I'm the current the president, and I started this new podcast series. It's going to be starting about the week when Shark Week here opens in a few weeks, it's July 11th that week. It's going to be a new podcast series, and I'm going to be interviewing a lot of people that have, have basically they talked about how we just started this whole field, came about in the 80s. A lot of the people, the first guests and stuff, are all a lot of people I, came, I grew up with in the shark world, and talk about what it was like to start out, because you really were a pioneer, right. and talk mm -hmm. about the whole field of shark science. Because I get that question all the time, like, how can I be a shark researcher? Mm -hmm. Well, if you listen to this podcast, you'll hear from experts in the field, people who have been at it, and what it took to get to where we are today. People, what's it called? It's, good. it's called Beyond Jaws. Beyond, Beyond Jaws. So people are fascinated by, people are fascinated by sharks, uh, since that movie's, movie came out. Mm -hmm. um, did that... Does that still play a role in your in your life today? I mean, how how, how, does, how does that just, this, this, that movie now with what you have going on with Shark Week is it related at all? Uh, no, it's just it was it was, a, it was a it was a cool movie, but it was like no, I mean it's kind of neat to watch still and everything. But you know, a lot of people you see like the, the character the uh, Richard Dreyfuss character, yeah, Matt Hooper, like oh I want to be like that guy going on those fancy boats and all those fancy... That equipment. wasn't a fancy so what boat. Do you, what do you have well, okay, in nineteen seventy five, it was a fancy boat. <laughs> What do you, what do you, yeah. what's, what's your, what's your shtick on, on, on Shark Week? What are you doing for, on Shark Week? They, I, I'm the, well, if you watch Shark Week, most of the time they're like flying white sharks, you know, breaching out of the water. I'm the guy, they, I'm the guy they call up, with, or usually if they're doing like an alien shark, or last year I did a show with uh, uh, my friend Forrest Galante, it's an extinct or alive, and then we're, basically we want to go, we want to go find some sharks we haven't seen for, for hmm. years, or that are rare. And the cool thing for me is when we do the show, we'll come up with some idea like the one we did last year, Land of the Lost Sharks. 
they were kind of like Forrest came and he says like, listen, is there some place we go like we can look for a whole, like say three or four different species? I says, I know a place. And so we went to look for three sharks, species that haven't been seen in decades, literally. Are these the unicorn sharks? And, and do we get, <laughs> like, do we get to know, do we get to know that, is, this, is the place a secret? Top no, secret? no, no, it's, 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 it's north, it's an area sort of from about Durban, north up to what's called Cozy South Bay. South Africa? In South Africa, right. yeah. And, uh, yeah, it is. Oh, yeah, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. And so they, uh, but we, we found all three, but, you know, when they go in to do them, I mean, I do a lot of homework and research, but I don't know going in if we're going to actually find them. And, but, we, but I've been very, very successful in these shows. We go there, we film for two, three weeks, and I'm like, we find them, so that's, they keep wanting me to come back. Hey, what were those? <clears throat> what kind of sharks? It was a, was a flat-nosed hound shark. It was, it was an ornate uh, sleep array, and the, the really good one was a, a, a white-tipped weasel shark, which hadn't been. He does. Dave does. Yeah, he does. He does. Okay. These are actually before my time. Actually, the smaller shark. The smaller shark. Okay. The smaller shark is what? Yeah, that's that's a good point. It's called, it's called a pygmy dwarf shark, and it's basically it doesn't get any bigger than the palm of your hand. Okay. And that's the thing I tell people: like, eighty percent of all shark species are less than five feet in length, and fifty percent right. don't get bigger than three feet. And um, the biggest shark out, the biggest shark there is, is? No, the biggest shark out there is a whale shark, and that gets about 60 feet. Which, Jesus. Which you figure, the megalodon's extinct. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like, yeah, get with the times, bro. Yeah. No, no, no. No, it's no, dead. No, no, no. It's, it's, you are, me. like you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the thing, the, the, the thing you gotta know. Did, did you teach Sharknado, is that what happened? No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, does, does he, does he, does KSU need us? He's got his own show going on. He does. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to go for a break. We're okay. going to go break and come back. Okay. Here we some go. some commercials I did. Who knows what they're like. Coast dismantling. You're running their ads? Huh? Is this your ad? Yeah. Oh, it is? Yeah, Coast dismantling, yeah. Really? Auto parts, yeah. Dude, I need a Camaro clip. They got all your stuff. Mm hmm. This is the first commercial I've had? This is the first commercial? New commercial, yeah. Yeah, I kept thinking you guys were going to break for Yeah. Also a sponsor of the show, Salon Santa Cruz, TC. Right there, right down the street. Right down the street, right across yeah. from you. Give me a fancy haircut. She was going to sponsor your show. Go for, absolutely. Wow. So for a nice haircut, go to Salon Santa Cruz right down the street. Uh, right on the corner from the boardroom. Right around the corner. What was it? Forty first Avenue. Forty eighth of the corner. What was the surf shop that was there? What was it called? Paradise. Paradise Surf Shop, shop in the mm -hmm. same building. Yeah. Who else oh, nice we, we, we mentioned Shellac Cafe. They roll the fatties. Uh, Aloha Island Grill down the street. Yeah. Numa's sponsored the show since day one. Great Long Hawaiian time. food. Numa's sponsored the show. Sean Robai from Farmers Insurance. Wow. 462 3222. Now, Sean Robai, mm. we torched because mm. Sean wore a bracelet, <laughs> an, an anklet that was supposed to deter sharks. And I gave him, I gave, we told him he was full of crap for a year. And eventually, we had him come down. To meet Dave Ebert, to meet, meet Dave, and to get the truth, to get the truth Debunked. on his and on his anklet bracelet that deters sharks. It's, when Dave turned it around, didn't, didn't it come around? It's an attracts Dave, sharks. Yeah, Dave turned around. And goes, you know what? You know what, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Robay, that anklet, you, that bracelet you have on, is more likely to attract sharks. You idiot. Yeah, it's a magnet. <laughs> so now he no longer wears it. He wants to put it on display. Uh, it's, it's rightful place mm. somewhere in the boardroom. <laughs> nice, I got a spot. <laughs> it's, so what's funny about that is now you all you you're like your surfing bros. Yeah. You want to buy them all bracelets. Yeah, anti shark things that yeah. are around their ankle. Right, and then you don't wear one. Exactly. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So as, as, as TC and I surf, I haven't seen TC wax on the board lately, but yeah, he's, he's lately, coming yeah. back. But we so, but there's there's one surf question I have for all the surfers listening today. Um, the, everyone thinks that the kelp that we have out here, the kelp is reaching from, you know, Steam Lane all the way down to Capitola. Mm -hmm. Does that, is that going to deter, people think that that's a wall, like a, a Hadrian's Wall, that's going to deter the great whites from coming in. 
to where they might want to feed. Is that true? Well, I used to think the same thing. Yeah. When I was, I used to do a lot of diving out here. Yeah. And I used to think like, oh great, they got the kelp. And there you you're, you do feel a certain sense of comfort there and stuff. Yeah. But Don't. you know, yeah, I wouldn't like bet my life on it. So, um, but I mean, I think the, the sharks move in and out through the kelp and stuff a lot more than people realize. Um, hmm. So um, <laughs> I wonder if all those new uh, yeah. Sprinter van surfers in Pleasure yeah. Point know that. Please note, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> if you're from over the hill, driving the a sharks are in Pleasure Point. It's driving a Sprinter van with it, your wetsuit hanging from the mirror. <laughs> the great white shark mm. will likely come see you as you sit in the lineup at 38. Do you think a shark knows you drive a Sprinter van? <laughs> Well, you, well if, you, if you've been manscaped. <laughs> so, so we're going to talk about the let's talk about the book real quick. Okay, we're going cool. to we're going to do some selling. I'm going to put this under the camera. Yeah, put it on the camera. By the okay. way, if you want to see the show, it's on Facebook Live on Santa Cruz Waves Facebook page. So, if you want to check out the show uh, live on Facebook, just go to Santa Cruz right. Facebook page. So, for you watching yeah. right now on Facebook, and this book, this book, which is now probably obsolete because there's now been sharks that have been found since you've. Wrote the book, yeah. right? Yeah. How yeah. many have been found? Uh, well, at least three that I found. Really? Yeah. So, um, but you know, it's like it'll be at least another five to eight years before I do this. I mean, you're you're like a shark detective. You know, you find yeah. you find sharks. How do you? How does the process start for you? Like, how does the, how's that start for you? Like, there may be a shark that hasn't been seen before. Uh, how do you start? A lot of times, it's more like I go to an area. I don't. I, I you know, as I meant, I talked told the story earlier about the Sri Lanka thing. And that was right. that was a an instance because I happened to this friend sent me this picture. But a lot of the times it's just I go to a um, I, I'm going to an area just to see what's there, and I don't really know what I don't really know what I'm going to find. Right. And so and so that's really how it kind of starts. I'm, and a lot of times it'll be like I'm looking to see what kind of sharks. Like I talked about Namibia a little bit. Nobody ever surveyed sharks in Namibia, and so it was like, well, let's go see what we can find. Obviously, we found white sharks there. Um, but we found a number of other shark species, little lesser-known species that we didn't... Nobody had ever gone there. And that's what... To me, it's the fascinating thing. It's, it's, it's that exploration. It's that sort of discovery thing. That's, that's what really gets me going, just to go see, like, let's go, let's go see what we can discover here. Let's go see what we can find here. That's, yeah. what, that's what gets me super excited about everything. You know? It's, you know, it's, it's, I, it was a thing with the sharks that got me... This past week, I, mean, I do a fair bit of fishing out here in front of where we are right now. Mm -hmm. Lately, there's been a lot of dogfish sharks in the water. Mm -hmm. Like, is, is there a, is that a seasonal influx with those guys? Yeah, those guys, they're kind of strange. They move about in groups. These, these, uh, I mean, as soon as they find dogfish, mm -hmm. yeah, they, they tend to move in groups, and they're, I don't, I don't know what the right word is, but they, nobody really, they just sort of, they'll show up in different areas, and they'll be there for a while, and they'll feed, and then they'll move off, and they'll show up somewhere else. Right. Because it's total pain in the butt when they're around. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. all day long. Oh, yeah. 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 And, and, that, and see, that's the kind of fascinating thing. It's also, it's, it's great questions. Like, why are these things moving around? What, why did they come here for now? And then why are they going to leave? And I assume it's has some favorable water conditions or some right. food. But, you know, that, that's the great stuff. Hmm. Do you see, we got, we're taking Dick's phone call. Okay. Because we roasted Dick a little bit. I, we can't. Dick, suck. Dick, deserves to be on, <laughs> Dick deserves to be on the air. You're manscaping. Hey, Dick, what's up, buddy? We're going to find that out for you right now. Thanks for calling, buddy. We really appreciate it. Didn't mean, I mean, didn't mean to roast you earlier. Just, but it was perfect, though. Thank you. <laughs> Bombed out. Um, I don't know. I didn't know anybody was... I hadn't heard about it, but I mean, what it, it sounds like, I mean, they used to, in, in like Africa in some places, they would, they'll go like in dynamite reefs, for example, they, you know, blow up parts of reefs, so fish will come up and they'll go collect the fish. Right. And you, you'll, it's not uncommon to get sharks will get attracted by the noise and by the food. So or is it that military ship that sank and attacked the 
crew in the water got eaten by sharks. Right. Oh, the those Indianapolis too. Yeah. Yeah, the Indianapolis. Yeah, they, yeah that was that was during World War Two. That's not good. Mm-hmm. Right. The, um, let's talk about that. Um, the one thing that found I found frightening before when we had you on the on the show was uh, when you were in South Africa and the, that one shark. Uh, he took take it, took a bite out of a guy. Oh yeah, yeah, and yeah. Was, and the other sh- and the other and the other shark was was. Oh, there was two. There was played, two sharks. Played right? ping pong. Right. Hang on a minute. Can you, can you talk about that? Yeah, yeah. Th- yeah this, the, this is the thing with like white sharks. People think there's. I still think think there's this thing. They're solitary and they're not. If you see one, there's probably another one. At least another one or more around. They tend to. They may not be right next to each other, but they tend they tend to move about loosely in groups. And so, <clears throat> um, in South Africa, there was I happened to talk to the surfer. Who was in back? There was a real, there was a really horrific shark attack when I was there, when I was living in South Africa in Cape Town, and but one of the surfers that I happened to talk to, um, this guy in front of him got hit by a white shark. I pulled down off the surfboard, and the guy popped up and he seemed like he was okay, and then the second shark came in and grabbed him and ran with him and spit him out. Then the other shark came back and grabbed him again, and ran with him, grabbed him, and ran with him and spit him out. And it was, and the way was, this guy described it to me, it was like, it was like, it was like two cats playing with a mouse. They didn't, weren't going to eat it. They just wanted to toy, toy with, toy with it. And this went on for a couple of hours. And of course, they're trying to get this guy's body back because he, you know, he basically died from be, from being. Bled out. He bled out. He bled out basically during that time. But it was, it was just the way the guy described it. It was like it wasn't a, an attack in terms of for feeding. It was more of just a play type of. Okay, that's not the way I want to go. But but yeah. do they normally? Eat human bodies, or they normally like bite and taste. It's human. It's, it's more it's, yeah, it's more like the bite and spit where they come up. It's a test. It, you know, it's like a taste thing. I mean, there have been some. There's been a few instances where they think that a person may have been consumed by a white shark, but they don't really. You know, there's not there's not been really good, a lot of good documented instances with white sharks. Other sharks, like bull sharks, there are some instances where those things do. They they'll attack somebody and they'll. Maybe we'll it's a, a com- competition for food situation. Like, hey, don't get near well, my feeding spot. Well, if, I can I tell you from watching sharks feed. When one goes in at a food food item, if it if it's a larger some food item they're eating, if they don't consume it really quick, all of his buddies are going to come in and finish it off. So you got to be quick on it, or you or you'll lose out to your friends <laughs> when you're eating. So well, it's a buffet <laughs> out there. Yeah. Jeez. Well, well, I told you I, one of the things I did. One of the one of the things I people knew me from early on was I looked at foraging behavior in sharks, particularly seven gill sharks, which are common around here. And pe- it was one of the first pe- I was one of the first people to ever document that these large sharks actually do hunt in groups. And they'll hunt smaller things on their own. But like for example, they'll go out, they'll seven gills will hunt in like a pack, if you imagine like hyenas attacking like a wildebeest or, or an impala. Right, right. That's how seven gills will will feed. They'll they'll they'll, they'll pull a seal out of a, a group of seals and they'll they'll in a, in a group, will we'll attack and eat it. And seven gills are often mistaken for great whites, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, Like, they look just like a great white. Well, no, they don't look anything like a great white. The people, a lot of times, if you're not familiar with sharks, people will look at and see a shark and, and just assume, oh, it's a white shark. Because they have a big, ugly mouth. Or you, well, might, got, say, you got, might say a big, beautiful mouth. But yeah. Like a, well, they have, I mean, they, they, have a, they have a large mouth, a mm-hmm. large head, and, and you know, they get 10 feet long. And, you know, people think, like, well, is that 20 feet or 25 feet? Let me tell you, when a shark gets, like, 10 feet, Okay, if it's bigger than me, I'm like six foot. If it's bigger than me, it's it's a big freaking shark. You say <laughs> twenty feet. It's twenty no matter what. I mean, you, yeah, twelve. <laughs> when, when it hits like 12, 15, 20, it's kind of all the same. They're big. Right. You know? Is there? Uh, do sharks? Uh, I'm sure they're all different, but the, the difference between clear water and murky water, and this is where it gets into. It depends on the species of sharks. Right. Uh, white sharks like clear water. That's why you see them. That they'll be like in back of the surf where it's a little clearer and stuff. And I think a lot of actually attacks with surfers, it has to do with, because with, with a lot of the turbulence where you're surfing, the sharks mistake you, that's where they come into a mistaken identity, they're not sure what, whether there's something there, they're not quite sure what it is, but they tend to be more of a clear water. Things like bull sharks, they tend to be more murky water, where you have, where you have low visibility, so again, when you say like, how do sharks hunt, well, it's like, you know, the, well, how, what kind of shark are you talking about, because everyone has a little different type of behavior that they'll, they'll use depending on, like say, shark, white sharks have like a large eyes, as you're, as you're aware of, you mm-hmm. watch the jaws, mm-hmm. and that's indicative of something that would live in more clear water, whereas like a bull shark, has, they tend to have smaller eye relative to the body, and they tend to be in more more murky or dirty water, they go up river mouths and stuff like that, and I tell you a story, when we were, these guys were diving last year, we were doing a shark week show, we are kind of offshore, off Where? Durban, oh, off Durban. Yeah. they have lots of, they have a lot of attacks with bull sharks, 
In the clear water, you can't get these bull sharks to come in at all. It's getting frustrating because they were trying to film them, you know, kind of getting frisky. And they just, they're, they're timid. They have certain areas that the sharks will patrol, like near landing sites where the seals are. And in that zone, it's like a kill zone. And when they right. cross that is where they'll, is where they'll, the attack will occur. Can you talk about this? this that sounds this, so this, awesome. This, this, book, yeah. this, yeah. book is for, this book you wrote is called Sharks of the World. Yeah. This is the Bible of sharks. Right yes, here, yes right? it is. It's yep. the Bible of sharks. Yep. And you can buy that. You can buy it on Amazon. Yep, Amazon. Princeton University Press is, is uh, publishing it. So you get it off the Princeton University Press website. You get it off Amazon.com. It's available now. The book will be here uh, July twentieth. Okay. How much is it? Approximately? It's about fifty dollars. Okay, and, is that, and there's oh, a field guide also coming. And there's out, a right? field guide. Yeah, but yeah. just put that on the camera over there. Yeah, the field guide. Yeah, this is this, comes this, with it. This is no, separate. No, it's okay. a separate. This will come. This will be out the first week of August. Okay. It's, it's it's basically this one here is more of a I don't want to say pictorial guy, but it's just basically the bullets. It's just a short. Right, you have, you right. have the yeah. Shorter version. It's a shorter version, just yeah. the, just the bullet points. Whereas this one goes into a lot more detail. Yeah, it's fascinating. Yeah, and there's a lot of information on you know shark finning, conservation, general shark biology hmm. that's in this book here. This is you know if you're a little older, like you know junior high, high school, this would be something really good. If you're just a younger person, this is probably better good. And your website's called lost. Mm-hmm. Your website is lostsharkguy.com. Lost, Lostsharkguy.com. What is your what is uh, uh, and, this is this has obviously taken many many years to to. The one I mentioned to you at last that I got in, in Sri Lanka, that little Sri Lankan one that I showed a picture of the guys and they brought it in. In recent in the last few years, that's probably been the best one. What's it called? It's called a it's it's qual it's called a look, I always use a scientific name. Um, it's a uh, um, it's a dwarf false cat shark. D- dwarf. False, or false cat shark. False cat shark. Yeah, and it's and it's in this book, by the way, too. I, I got it. I was able to get into this book here. You name it after your buddies. I mean, you, is TC well, and I going to get we going to get a shark I, name off the well, lip shark? Off well, the lip. I named I, I, I named one after my niece Lana. <laughs> right, Lana. Right, yeah, Lana, Lana, shark. Lana saw shark, which is also in this book too, by the way. We would we and would that. we would def, we would definitely part with some cash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We, we, will, we will give you some swag, a new manscape, new manscape <laughs> kit, Is it t-shirt, like a shark? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we hook you up, bro. <laughs> awesome. <With some> <laughs> uh, and where's the next trip? Where are we going next? Uh, as soon as uh, probably back to Africa. So as soon as whenever I can travel back to Africa, I'll be they're, going to Africa. They're not letting scientists uh, in Africa yet. Well, it's a matter you can get there, but I, you know, I can't afford to spend two weeks in quarantine. Oh. Uh, but probably Madagascar is next up. When I go back to Africa, be South Africa and then Madagascar, be, this is going to be my next trip. Are you doing any research here since you, since you're since you're home? Yeah, I've yeah. Always, yeah. I've always kind of try. I always kind of got my sort of finger in the pie here. I've done actually done a lot of research. My, my whole career started here, working on sharks in San Francisco Bay and in Humboldt Bay. See, and it was six and seven gill sharks. That, that's what really launched my whole career here. So, so is, is, is that a bunch of his fans listening tonight, Neil? Yeah. Too? Yeah. Six, who? Yeah. A bunch yeah. of his fans. Collegiate this and something else. Yeah. Sharp research. Monterey, uh, the Monterey something or other. Yeah, the Moss Landing guys. Moss Landing Marine Laboratory. Yeah, that's where I'm based at. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Just, just, yeah, there you are. Just down this right next six, door. The difference between a six-gill shark and a seven-gill shark. Would what? you, hey, would you? <laughs> what's it? He was quiet before. We knew something we got. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well. Okay. All sharks. Just to put it in context, all sharks have five gill slits on each side of their head. There's eight species that have six gills, and there's two that have seven gills. So you can always use a trivial thing on how many gills does a shark have. It can be five to seven, but there's only a few two species of sharks that have seven. One occurs in California. And they're very common around, especially San Francisco Bay. And then there's a six gill shark, which also occurs here. It occurs in deeper water, so it's usually gotta go down. Sometimes they seem a little shallow, but they gotta go. Down. Uh, so let's see, a six gill, you gotta go down maybe 500 feet or more to get them, but you can. They'll go down to. They'll go down to over 7,000 feet deep. No kidding. Yeah, yeah. 7,000 feet deep. Hmm. Right, and that, and that, and that's where like you know you're talking about uh, exploring inner space, you know, the, the, the deep sea and the ocean. That's where a lot of these species are, are found. So yeah, we're on Mars. We're checking out Mars right now and flying helicopters around Mars. But we haven't found out a lot what's going on around <laughs> yeah. planet yet. Yeah, and we're you're naming lot- sharks every yeah. other day. Yeah. Hey, no, God bless Rosie. Rosie loves the, the, the yeah. whole NASA. Oh, it's, and, it's, uh, yeah. But but we we got stuff here which we haven't seen. Yeah, or know nothing about. And a lot of stuff too. Like you know, I do this, a lot of stuff out of passion because nobody really supports this stuff. You know, I get a little bit of support here and there, but it's not like it's not the kind of research. Everybody's like, well, wow, that's really kind of cool, but they don't really 
fund this type of stuff. I get to find a few donors here and there to help out. But it's really just a passion just to go to some of these, to go to these places. Like, so when you talk about where you're staying at like the Hyatt or someplace, you know, it's whatever I can afford mm -hmm. on that trip, which right. could be a lean to or a You've been doing it for decades. Yeah. Are you going to do it for decades? I think so. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it as long as I can. As long as I stay healthy and I've got the passion, I'm going to do it. Do you have friends yeah. who call you the crazy shark guy? They call, they call, they call me the lost <laughs> shark guy. <laughs> the lost shark guy. Yeah. Do you I, think there's a big one out there that hasn't been discovered? I mean, that's my favorite. I'm looking, always looking, looking for the, the big shark. fellow. I'm just, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for the. I'm always looking for the shark that hasn't been discovered yet. Right. And it could be big, it could be small. Um, you know, it's just whatever. It's, it's just that discovery. What's the What's the biggest one? You, the biggest one that you've discovered. Uh, uh, gosh, what's the biggest one I've named? Probably, probably maybe six feet or so. I'd say okay. something like that. Maybe I'd have to think about it. Um, somewhere around that, probably the off, largest one. Off here, off a of pleasure point where we all surf, is le all leopard sharks, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and they're, they're pretty, just, they're tame. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. pretty cool. They're pretty, yeah, they're pretty. They're Beautiful pretty cool. looking sharks. They're, they're, mm -hmm. they're one of the most, yeah, one of the, I mean, I, again, as someone who looks at sharks all over the world, they're definitely one of the most prettiest sharks around, these leopard sharks we yeah. have here. The strangest so. one is? The strangest one? Yeah, hammerhead or? Uh, that's a very strange that's creature. That's a strange one, that's a strange one. I, I a goblin shark's pretty strange, because that, that's a shark when you see it. They, this shark, that shark gets about 20 feet long. It's pink with blue fins. What's the one on the book with the, with the whiskers? Oh, that's, a, um, that, that's called a woobigong. A woobigong. And they're, com they're common in um, um, Australia. And they get the name, woobigong is, is an aboriginal name for tassel mouth. And they have like tassels. Yeah, they have the tassels. And they're, they're kind of flat. And they almost don't look like a, they look almost like a ray. And they lay down there. And they ambush Fish will swim over and they ambush. They ambush them. But they're camouflaged. They're camouflaged. Yeah. Right. They're well, like, they kind of look like a rock almost. Yeah. Like, exactly. Yeah. What they do. It's exactly what they do. They huh. just you, they, they blend in really well with the coral reefs and the rocks. On that, you find like in the Great Barrier Reef and those places. They attack. They yeah. They, they're like angel sharks do that. Angel sharks will lay in the bottom and fish will swim over. And those those pop up and grab them. And before we go, a lot of people don't realize this, but the the ray family are related to sharks. Yeah, right? the rays. I what, gotta make the plug for the rays is that they the rays are basically just flat sharks, you know. And so like, and so they're so they're they're actually. And you also have they're called ghost sharks, which are also a type of shark. And what unites all of these things is they have a cartilage and a skeleton. Gotcha. And you talk about discovering, I've actually discovered new ghost sharks right here in Monterey. Hmm. So I don't even have to travel around the world sometimes to find them. They're right, your species. right in your doorstep. Yeah, they're like 2,000 feet deep, but they're kind of right here. Which is amazing because we have all these scientists exploring our bay. And I think of Madagascar where people aren't doing it. And yeah. I get, well, maybe you're excited to go there. Yeah. Because a better chance to discover there than maybe here? Yeah, well, there's still, I, I'm amazed at the discoveries I can still make here. And you think, like, we're right here at California, Silicon Valley, and I'm still right. discovering new sharks here. That's discovering what a new the, cactus at the boardwalk or something, yeah. you know? Like, really, it's like, what? wow. There's, there's three species of thresher sharks here, yeah. And they're, 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 one, of the, they're kind of a, one of these species very unique. They have a long whipped tail they use to stun their prey. Yeah. What do you mean as far as with the ray, the... Yeah. Yep. Let's just talk about it again before we go. Yep. The book is called Sharks of the World, A Complete, complete guide, guide to Sharks. Yep. Mm. Okay, and we've got, we got a smaller book here, which is also the... What do you call it? What's it's a pocket guide to the Sharks of the World. Guide. Yeah. And you can go to his website, which is lostsharkguide.com. Sure. How many sharks yep. are in that book? There's 536 in that book and 536 here. Yeah. And if, you, if you want to follow me on Facebook or Instagram, yeah. it's law. It's Lost Shark Guy. Law, Facebook is Lost Sharks. Lost Shark Guy on Instagram, and I post, and you can find out when you get links to like where to get the book at and everything like that. So just go in there and follow me, and I'll give you the most current update. We have really cool people in our community, Neil. Yeah, I know we got. Yeah. Yeah. They're all coming down on the show here. Yeah, I got, so we, got, I got, we got some fascinating <laughs> guests. It's good to see Dave Ebert. Yes. You know, it's good to see because, you know, he hasn't been eaten by a shark. Every time I call him, he's like, he answers the phone and like, he's not there. You know, it's interesting. I went to Catalina with your brother. Yeah. Like, <laughs> three weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we had a great time. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks, Small Doctor. World. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me on your maiden voyage back yeah, to radio. Thank you. You're the guy. You were yeah. the guy for maiden voyage. Uh, we'll see if it's not our last show over here at KSCO. <laughs> it may well be off the top. <laughs> One and done. Well, I, haven't, yeah. I haven't paid for the next one yet. <laughs> but next week's show, the one and only Jake Nielsen and Triple Threat. Dude. Now, Jake wow. Nielsen, Bill Graff, who's been here for God knows how long, and he loves music. Mm -hmm. Loves music. 
you know, he's been a DJ, been in radio for 40 years, said about Jake Nielsen, he is the closest thing to Eric Clapton that you will ever hear. Wow. And he will be here next Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. There's Jake Nielsen in Triple Threat. Worth a listen. He's an amazing guitar player. Amazing guitar player. Amazing hey, blues Hey, welcome guitarist. back to KSCO. Yeah, thanks, buddy. You yeah. too, my friend. It's, it's been... I know. It's, Dave, it's, thanks. Oh, it's been a great time. What? What are we doing? We got one minute? Oh, we got one minute. Oh. Uh, you can check out this show if you want to on Facebook Live. It'll be on YouTube later on tonight. Uh, after the video show on Facebook. You can go to OfterFaceShow.com, check out all the podcasts, many fascinating guests. Oh, Bill Hart, Dr. Bill Hart, talking about sleep, is coming back on the show. i got so many guests lined up, all fascinating people of Santa Cruz and Santa Cruz County and beyond. I want to thank everybody for listening, and we'll see you next week. I want to thank Nick, our engineer tonight. And once again, thank you to Dr. Dave Eber. Thank you very much. Good Thanks, night. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you next week. Great show, you guys. Thank you very much. Thanks, yeah. everybody, for tuning in. This book's amazing. If you want to pick it up, it's on Amazon. It just came out this right now, brand new. All right, we're done tonight. Neil, any final words? God bless everyone. Thank you very much for listening. Woo. We appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Thanks, guys. Woo.